This is how we play. Should probably have waited until the uh, teapot was done. Okay. Uh, got a new shirt. I uh, got a, a couple of them, and I think there's still another one or two on the way. Um, they're from within the greater Facebook community. Yeah, see? Natural 20s. Really cool. Uh, you got to wash them immediately when you get them. They're um, stored in a, a chemical compound to prevent mildew, I imagine. Because um, I've I've had other products that came in and did not have something like that and did have mildew and it was horrifying. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, check them out. Uh, there should be a link. I want to talk today about a very peculiar conversation that I had with somebody in my community. Because of course, if I, it was a conversation I had with somebody in my community, it was bizarre. Stands to reason. I won't go into too many of the details because it would be impossible to understand for anybody that's brain were not so addled by anime that anything I would say to them would be meaningless regardless. So it would just be a waste of time. Basically, I had had an epiphany. Up until that epiphany, I had tended to equate imaginativeness with creativity. This conflation is problematic. Furthermore, I had a tendency to venerate being imaginative in a creative space. This is something that I think is probably fairly normal. This was also something that was done by the person with whom I was having this conversation about a third party, which is why it was weird. Because they took it as an insult for me to say that this person had managed, this third person, to be creative without necessarily having to be imaginative. Now, what I mean in these contexts is that somebody can, within your own mind, conjuring of an image, imaged, imagined, and then you find a way to externalize what you have imagined, and that externalization is a process of creation, a creative process. There are times when creative force is necessary that is as unimaginative as possible. And this is extremely counterintuitive to the way that we think about imagination programmers. They're also going to be creating things that have to fit systemically with an existing structure in order to work or make any sense. And in that case, the less you have imagined, the less of it is what we might think of as picturesquely original, the better. What the person in question here had done was to create a way to emulate certain video game and television experiences within tabletop role-playing games as precisely as possible. If they had imagined something rather than being as purely creative without being imaginative in this case as possible, then they would have created something that was a different experience rather than an emulation of the experience that they were trying to capture in this new medium. The Lamp Edition version of Dungeons & Dragons gives people a hell of a lot more freedom in character creation, but 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons tells you what you already know and facilitates knowledge you already have in creating your characters. That's much faster, and it's much easier to do. But your character basically has to be somebody else's idea of who their character should be, because that's just how that system works. But I'd like to give you another example on the opposite end of that spectrum. This is... Let's call it the Maguire Guild. That sounds good enough to me. So the Maguire Guild is an adventurer's guild which centers around Maguire, who established it on the back of his success as an adventurer. And he bears a curse, which, while it prevents him from aging, means that in order for him to continue to exist bodily, he has to spend every night that he would sleep submerged in diamond dust. <laughs> so he's wealthy as, as all get out, but that wealth is generally just used to keep him going one day at a time. A guild largely composed of people who have inherited their position within the guild from predecessors, from earlier generations that he knew in those old days. At this point, 200 years ago. Peculiar figure with very peculiar powers. His enemies are generally people who are after his wealth without understanding why it's important except for a few connections that he has with his past, such as a likewise cursed entity worshipped as a god. It might come as some surprise to you to learn the Maguire Guild. It's based on an adventurer that everyone 
who is my age or younger, is familiar with. McGuire is inspired by the DuckTales interpretation of Scrooge McDuck. That is extremely imaginative. And in making it something playable, that process objectified it in the world, codified it, wrote it down. And that is a creative process. It's not necessarily more creative than making a DuckTales tabletop role-playing game, which would try to capture the experience of the television show. That's a completely different animal, even though the inspiration came from the same place. And there's a value in not just understanding the difference, but in having both of those options. Why do I not want somebody to be able to play the DuckTales tabletop role-playing game? At some point, I might have the opportunity to go in there as a beagle boy, or as maybe some imagined potential nemesis for Gizmo Duck. That'd be neat. We should probably best, as a community, find ways of valuing emulation through creativity that doesn't need to be imaginative, while at the same time being able to celebrate things that are imaginative. And the perfect synthesis of these two things is probably the art persona. Well, I suppose I should probably do an art persona video. I might even have done one in the past. I think that'll be the next episode. The next episode I'll do art persona. I should come up with a way to end these. Um, I tell Twitch chat I'll see him in hell. That doesn't seem appropriate for these videos. And they're not very long either. Nobody cares. Just hit the stop button.